Thank you. Um, whoop. I'm speaking close to the microphone. I used to be an artist, um, and I'm a songwriter. Should I just? But is he going to control the uh, the slides from over there? So I I have to tell him when to to. I don't know. They they told me that they they are going to do it. Oh okay. Um, we'll see how it goes. In worst case, we'll um, um, just kind of skip the slides. But uh, um, so as he. I'm a songwriter, I'm also uh, a director of the British Academy of Songwriters and Composers. And for us, as songwriters, things haven't worked out as, as rosy in the digital space. Um, when I started writing for The Guardian, um, I started learning more about why this is. And, the, and you know, some of it is because of of us falling behind when it comes to negotiations with the, the big streaming services. But some of it is actually our own fault. Um, and uh, I, the, the, the problem in, on the songwriter side is the splitting of the, the, all the rights. So when I first started as a songwriter, I signed to BMG. I thought all of that admin stuff was just going to be taken care of by BMG, and I could just write music and you know and collect the royalty. They'd collect the royalties and, and pass them over to me. Um, I never submitted a lyric. I never submitted a split sheet. I don't think I've ever uh, discussed splits in the studio with the people I work with. And now, in retrospect, I realize that that. Um, was uh, presumptuous of me, so to speak, and in the digital space, even more so. So when I started working with um, a songwriter producer friend of mine, um, we started looking deeper into this and see how can we solve this problem for songwriters. Um, song, nobody goes into songwriting to um, uh, do admin, but we have to do some basic admin to actually um, be able to get clean data to be able to get, get paid properly. So that's why we created oddly the uh, the platform. Um, but do do I do I can't use this then? If I would click that, yeah. It, oh okay. no, next one. There we go. So as a songwriter, we the two main things apart from the love of our music, we like to get paid and we like to get credited. And today. Um, Neither one of these happen in the, in the streaming space. We do get paid something, but we don't get paid correctly a lot of the time. And we're not credited at all. It's as, as if we've disappeared completely. It used to be that, that we were in the liner notes. I used to buy records based on who played on them, on, on produce it, who produced it, and who wrote the, the songs. Now I have to go on Wikipedia, and, and who knows if, what's correct and what's not. And then we can change the slide again. So, or this is not my, uh, oh, there we go. So, um, I think it might be working. Um, so, I think of a song, and most songwriters just think of a song as a piece of music. We don't realize that all of these different, uh, um, all, all of this information needs to go uh, be logged when you write a song. Um, uh, obviously ideas, but, but the split discussions, ISWC, most of these codes, you know, songwriters, even professional songwriters don't know what they are. Um, and because of this, we're, we're, when we're talking to publishing companies and to the PROs, they estimate that at least 20% of all revenue gets lost because it gets stuck in, in, in the process between the streaming services and us. Um, and the main reason for this is this. There's two sides to the music industry. There's me and my colleagues, and then there's like PRS and the publishers. They hate when I say that, but yeah. We speak completely different languages, and they speak in codes, and we speak in music. Let's see, there we go. So when I talk to songwriters and to, to producers, and even to some managers and, and uh, publishers in the industry, I always say, these are the four codes that get you paid. 
Um, and then I, I ask them what, which ones they recognize, and usually it's like, you know, just a, a wind of silence in the room. ISRC is the one that some people uh, will recognize because that's the code on the record. IPI, even songwriters don't know what that is, even though that's our national insurance number. Um, you know, so if, we don't, if that is not attached to every song that we write, we don't get paid. Um, the ISWC is the, the code for the work and the IPN number, if you're a producer or if you're a musician, that is your national insurance number. Um, most, I mean, I don't even know either one of those by heart, but somewhere they gotta be logged. So to kind of like explain it in a kind of simple way, um, we, we've got uh, two main backers with Audley. One of them is Max Martin. He's a songwriter producer from Sweden. I'm from Sweden as well, hence my accent. Um, up and coming guy, works with Taylor Swift, The Weeknd, and a bunch of other people. Um, and then the other main backer is Bjorn from ABBA. And him and his co-writer wrote a song called Dancing Queen. So this is just a simple uh, explanation how, how they would get paid correctly. So they had a simple one. He always says when I, when I talk to him, it's like, I don't understand how it could be 15 people writing a song. Um, who says no? And which I think is a pretty perceptive question. But so for him and Benny, his co-writer, it's very simple, split 50-50. They both had an IPI number. Universal had an IPI number, Universal Publishing. They all had to go into the Dancing Queen ISWC. And then you have all the different cover versions of, of Dancing Queen. And they all have different people playing on them. And they, those people's IPN numbers need to be connected to, to each ISRC that needs to be connected to the ISWC. Uh, unfortunately, in the digital space, the ISWC and the ISRC are not connected, and songwriters are pretty crap at logging this stuff as well. Um, so this is what we wanted to kind of log in Audley. This is just a quick list of, of all the different things that, that need to get logged for people to get credited and uh, paid correctly. Um, lyrics are really important as well, because if you, these days, you look at Shazam, you look at YouTube, even uh, Spotify, people like reading lyrics. People use Musical.ly to do the you know, covers. And the lyrics are not com coming from the songwriters, they're actually coming from a user-generated site, um, a lot of the time from Lyric Find, which is, um, you know, sometimes it's quite funny to, to read the, you know, whatever the translation is, because they might not even have, um, I'm passing that. Um, they, they might not even speak English properly. So this is just a quick explanation of what Audley does in this. So we basically work as a hub in the middle that connects, uh, that lets the songwriters um, input all their information while uh, they, that then can be pumped out to the PROs, to the publishers, and to the um, managers and DSPs and whatever for us to get, um, get credited correctly. Here you go, see that. We're also working with Apple and with Avid, with the DAW, so that we can put that information into the stems of the, uh, um, of the music so that it could actually follow from beginning to the end, because we believe that it needs to be logged in the studio as you're working, and not after when you're trying a year down the line, try to remember what happened in the studio. These are just some of the people that we work with, or some of the organizations. Um, we work with Basca as well, which is not there. We're also working on, uh, with all the streaming services, on doing a song story thing, where actually we will have all the information of who played and who wrote it, and even be able to put maybe videos into, into the DSPs to show, you know, from the studio and lyrics and everything, to be able to make a better attachment between uh, the music fan and the people who created it, and to show that there, it takes a village to create a, a record. It's not just one person. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, thank you. Grazie, Elian.